Welcome to DIY Jewellery Making at Home. Hi, I'm Sarah and I hope you enjoy this air dry clay tutorial. I love this necklace of mine and lots of you have asked if I've made it myself. I didn't make this one but we are going to recreate it in air dry clay today. You can use whichever brand of air dry clay you can get hold of. There are so many brands and varieties available, even the air dry clay light will work really well for this and will actually make this chunky necklace quite light. But today I'm going to show you it in DAS air dry clay. You could also use polymer clay and bake these beads. But I think air dry clay is perfect because you make your item and then simply let it dry nice and slowly. For a small project like this I like to take it fresh out of the packet and give it a good knead and a good condition. These beads are nice pebble shapes so we're going to try and recreate those. The fresh clay is lovely and soft and really nice to work with. Decide what size you want your beads to be and pinch the right amount of air dry clay. Roll it and then smooth any cracks like this. It's a lot easier to remove the cracks at this stage, while the clay is still nice and damp and fresh. It really is a nice gorgeous and silky clay. All the cracks are nicely smoothed out, so we can now start shaping it into whatever shape you require. These pebbles have a nice sort of pointy edge to them, and a bit of an uneven shape, so we're going to recreate that and I flatten the balls of clay just slightly. If your air dry clay doesn't seem quite this soft, you can get a little bowl of water and just dip your finger in and use this to make it a little bit softer and this will enable you to smooth it out nicely. Once you're happy with the bead shape, we can take a small wooden tool like this or you can use the end of a paintbrush. I like to hold the bead in my fingers and press the tool in, or you can press down on your board. Twist and press the tool in till you see it dimple the other side. Then you can take the tool out and put it in the reverse side just like this and twist and then you get a lovely hole in the centre of your bead. Smooth out any imperfections again either with a brush or your finger and I think it makes a really lovely bead. Take some more balls of clay of various sizes and we can make the rest of the beads. If you've got a small amount of clay left over from another project, you can always just make a few little beads with it and then after you've done a few projects, you can collect those beads together and make a nice piece of jewellery with them. You can make nice round beads in just the same way as well. So why not take a look around and find the kind of jewellery you like with nice chunky beads and then use that as some inspiration and have a go at making them. I'm now going to carry on making some more of these beads so we can recreate this lovely piece of jewellery. And here they are fully dried in some white and stone air dry clay. So I left them to dry on my tile and then turned them over halfway through. Between the pebble shaped beads on this necklace there are some silver flatter beads so I'll show you how I make these as well. Take a small section of smoothed out clay like we did to begin with and you can use a rolling pin or a glass jar or something cylindrical and also a piece of cling film, a piece of cling wrap and some miniature cookie cutters. Roll out the clay to the thickness you require. I normally say make your air dry clay to more than 5mm in thickness really but these are really quite thin and I'm going to experiment and see how well these survive on this necklace with them being a little bit thinner than normal. I use the cling film to get a nice soft edge against the cookie cutter. You can do this with any shapes that you use and it does give the clay a lovely softened edge. And you'd notice this a little bit more when the clay is a bit thicker. Smooth the edges off and then gently lift it off the board using a knife or the tool like this, just being nice and gentle. This is a bit too thin so maybe when you do it just do it slightly thicker than this. You can make a hole in the centre just as we did before. Then smooth them out and leave them to dry on your board. I mainly use a smooth tile for my work surface. And these are just tiles left over from our bathroom and kitchen projects. I then roll out some more clay and continue to make some more flat beads of various thicknesses. 
and I think I'll do the next ones just slightly thicker. Here you can see a little bit more clearly how the cling film leaves a really lovely smooth soft edge. Again I'm smoothing them out and shaping them with my fingers and the beauty of these beads is you can make any design and any shape you wish. I've let these dry fully and we're now ready to paint them. They're so easy to do that even my son made these ones for me. He really enjoyed the whole creative process too. Children love to create with air dry clay and I find it really focuses them for really quite a while. And we can all get satisfaction from the things that we create. I know a lot of you get so much out of being creative with air dry clay. It really is relaxing and therapeutic. As most of my beads are now dry, we can carry on and decorate them. I like to paint my clay with acrylic paints and here I have some gorgeous new acrylic paints from Elephant Art. I have this gorgeous sustainable acrylic paint set, manufactured and packaged with the environment in mind. Elephant Art sell lots of different art products including these brushes that I got from there. And we're now ready to mix up our colour palette for the beads. I want a slightly muted down orange so I take the opposite on the colour wheel to orange which is a purple and lilac and mix a little bit of this in and it just mutes down the orange and just sort of dirties up that colour. I was going to use a different colour palette for my new necklace but I thought I'd keep it the same and try and recreate this one. To help you out while painting you can add your bead to a piece of plasticine like this or alternatively you can take a thin stick or the end of a paintbrush and paint them like this. This way you don't get your fingers all messy, but you do what works for you. Don't forget to add a little bit of paint in the hole as well. You can also use pencils to hold the beads on top and get plenty of them and paint all your beads all in the beautiful colours. And I think acrylic paint works really well with air dry clay. I do sometimes use watercolour and you can check out that video too. Leave your beads to fully dry and then we will want to varnish them. I do have some silver acrylic paint but I'm going to spray these thinner ones with some spray paint. You can use a surface primer first and you can just go in and spray them with your spray paint depending on what spray you have. Always give spray paint a really good shake and several thinner coats is better than one thick coat. I've let them dry, turned them over and sprayed the other side. To eliminate as much mess as possible I'm outside and spraying within a box. My original piece of jewellery has this lovely crackle effect on the beads. I was hoping to recreate this on my air dry clay beads with this crackle medium but I wasn't very successful so if you've used some crackle medium and air dry clay please comment below and I'd love to see how. So I'm going to add some texture to my beads by just screwing up a little tissue, you can use a piece of cloth or anything and taking a silver or a grey paint and dabbing this on and then some white as well just taking off some of the excess paint before I add it to the bead. This just gives the bead some texture and some depth to add a bit of interest to it. I will keep experimenting with the crackle medium and see what nice effects I could develop with that. With this orange one I want to add some of the orange back in again so it is quite helpful to keep some of that original colour there and use that on top as well. Now that my other beads are also sprayed silver, I can give them a top coat of varnish or similar. But I also know a lot of you have been asking me if I can use resin on my air dry clay. And so here I have some resin, I'm going to wear some gloves and some goggles and I'm outside so that it's well ventilated. This is a two part epoxy resin made for crafters just like ourselves. You can measure equal quantities using a measuring cup or a measuring spoon or I'm weighing mine out here in millilitres. I have 8 millilitres of part A and 8 millilitres of part B. We now need to stir both A and B fully together and it tells you on the packet how long to do this for. I'm not that familiar with craft resin so this is all a bit of a learning curve for myself as well. 
but it is a really exciting medium to use and the possibilities are endless for all the creative projects that can be completed with it. The acrylic paint on my beads is fully dry and so I've brought them outside here to coat in this resin. The resin is a lot thinner and runnier than I thought it would be, so I'm going to have to be careful that I don't let the resin run onto the board. I'm going to coat the top side, let it dry and then turn them over and repeat the process on the back. Using the trick with the paintbrush or the stick actually I think will work a lot better to coat the beads in the resin too. But I've realised you really don't need to put much on, put a little bit on and then smooth it out. It's like there, I've got a bit too much and so it's going to drip and flick off. So any tips from any of you resin crafters out there, please let us know in the comments below. I couldn't resist it and I had to dip one of my beads directly into the resin but there's far too much on there and it's going to drip for really quite a long time. We don't want the bead hole to be sealed up either. So I'm going to go back to adding a little bit and spreading it out. I'm now leaving these to cure and dry. You really hardly need any resin at all to cover these beads and so I'm going to use up what I have left over. You can get this chameleon powder to mix into the resin and it makes a beautiful glossy finish. And so if you have any silicon moulds like the one I just showed you there to make some little mini beads, every time you have some leftover resin you can make some of these. Unfortunately when I left these to set on this tile they did actually get stuck. So lesson learnt there, I need to let them dry on a silicon sheet and then they will lift straight off. So what I've had to do is just repaint these and re-varnish them and they're good to go. So now we can put everything together, I'm just going to thread these beads and turn these into a beautiful necklace just like our original. I have some jewellery clasps and some jewellery findings but you can just thread them straight onto some wire or some cord if that's what you have. I'm going to use this metal jewellery cord as this is what was on the original but really don't worry just use what you have or what you can get hold of. It's really fun to see this come together so I do hope you give it a go. Please come and find me over on Instagram and see some more photos of how this turns out. I have a little clasp for the end of the cord and so I just need to tie a knot, I actually did a triple knot and then I can pinch the knot shut in the little clasp there. You could add some nice cotton fabric for the rest of the necklace but I'm going to use this black leather cord just so that my new necklace is a little bit different from the original. I really love my new necklace and I do hope that this has inspired you to get creative. Please comment below, please like and subscribe and come and see some more of my air dry clay projects and all my other craft projects. Thanks for watching, bye for now.